In this video tutorial, we are going to be creating this vintage logo using Photoshop. To get started on this logo, there's two things we need to download off the internet first, and they are free. Uh, they're two different brush sets. One of them is to get this deer head, and the other one is to get these arrows. Okay, so to get them, jump on over to the internet. I'll put these links in the description of the video below, um, so feel free to click on them there. But the first one comes from deviantart.com and it's a deer brush set. You will need to have a free account uh, to get access to this. So once you've created your account, simply click the download button here and you've got yourself access to these different deer brushes. The other set that we need is the 51 arrows brushes from myphotoshopbrushes.com. This one you don't need an account for, so simply go to the website and scroll down, click the grey button and get yourself access to all these different um, arrows. Okay, once you've downloaded those brushes, we all need to go over to Photoshop and load them in. Okay, so we'll need to make a new document first and we'll do a print document. Okay, we'll set up our page as if it's ready um, for high quality print. So I'm going to set it to an A4 template. You can change the size, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to go with an A4 template. That's a pretty decent size logo. I'm going to choose landscape orientation and I'm going to change my color mode from the screen mode to the print mode. If you're just using this logo on screens, so on computers or phones or whatever, stick with RGB color. But if you're planning to print your logo, then you want to choose CMYK color. The last thing we'll do is just change the background contents here from white. Click the little white box and choose yourself a dark grey colour. Okay, remember you can check this only web colours on and off. So if you've got a um, colour box looking like that, I just uncheck that so you've got access to a few more different colours. Okay, so click OK, click Create, and we've now got our blank canvas ready to go. So the first thing that we might do, as I said just a moment ago, is import those brushes that we just previously downloaded. If I just pop over to my downloads folder, you can see they do come in a zipped up folder. So there's the arrows in the zipped up folder. I've actually extracted these deer brushes already. It's this ABR file that we want to import into Photoshop. All right, so in Photoshop, grab your brush tool. Your brush tool is the little one on the side here in your toolbox that looks like a paintbrush. Okay, you can press the letter B for a shortcut to get your brush tool. Now brush tool is basically a paintbrush that will allow you to paint on the screen with different brushes. Okay, this is just one of the plain um, soft brushes that you can use in Photoshop. What we're going to do is import the deer head brushes and the arrow brushes and we're going to paint with them. So to do that, up the top, you have got this little icon here, okay, depending on what brush you've got selected now, that symbol will change, but this is basically what it looks like at the moment. What we need to do is we need to import the deer head brushes and the arrow brushes. So to do that, hit the little cog on the right hand side of the page there and go down to import brushes. And simply find those ABR files, there should be the two of them that you downloaded, and load them in to Photoshop. Now I've already done this previously, so you can see down the bottom here I've already got the deer brushes and the arrow brushes. I just need to expand the folder, close the other ones, and you can see them. So let's start with a deer head. Okay, you've got a couple to pick from that could work. You've got either this one here or this one here. I'll probably go with this one here. And once you've got your deer head brush, you can paint it onto the page, like so. Okay, so it's a little bit small for my liking at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it bigger by pressing my right square bracket. Another way to do it is just go up the top here to the size and just play around with the size lever at the top here. Okay, I'm thinking about 1200 is a good size for this one. The other thing I want to do is just change my color before I stamp it on the page. Okay, now I saved some few colors into a document. I want my white to be EAE 9E9. Okay, that's what it already is, so EAE 9E9. It's not quite white, but it's pretty close to it. It's just like an off-white. And I'm going to stamp that roughly in the center of the page. I might make a new layer for it first, actually, and I'll call it Deer Head. If I can put everything onto its own layer, it's going to make editing a bit easier. Okay, so you can pick that up now, and you can move it around to wherever you want it. I'm looking for the center of the page, so that looks good to me right there. Um, you should have imported your arrow brushes as well. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my brush tool and go and change my deer head brush to one of these arrows. Now you can pick any arrow that you think looks good. I am going to roll with this one here. Okay. Now it won't let me stamp it straight on the page. I'm going to make a new layer and call this arrows. And before putting it in, I'm going to change the color of my arrow. Okay, again, I've got a color here. It's a kind of tanny, goldy color that I want. C4A880. So I'm just going to type that into the hexadecimal code there. You can see it's a kind of a yeah, gold color. Now that arrow is a bit small at the moment, so let's make it a heap bigger. Oh, let's try that. About size. That size 2200, you can see up the top here, size 2200 is what I've got. And just slap it roughly in the middle of the page. You can then grab your move tool and get it right in the middle, about there. And I'm going to hold shift. And with my move tool still selected, I'm going to hover just off the corners and give it a rotate by clicking and dragging. I want to get it on that angle there, 45 degree angle. Okay, then I'm going to go to... Actually, I'll hit the little tick first of all just to apply those changes, and then I'm going to go to Edit and Copy. I'll then go to Edit, Paste Special, and Paste in Place. So I'll paste another arrow right on top of the one that we just put in. And we can now go to Edit and Transform and flip it horizontally. Okay, so we've now got two arrows crossing over with one another. That's looking pretty good. Feel free to move them a bit if you need to. Okay, I'm just going to nudge them using my arrow keys up a little bit. I think they're pretty well centered still, so that's all good. Um, that's looking pretty nice. Okay, that's the hardest part of our logo done. The last thing I need to do is just throw in a little bit of text. So I'm going to use the um, text tool, which is the letter T here. I'm going to go back to that whitish color for my text, so the off-white color. And I'm going to choose the font Lacida Bright. Okay, it's already come up as one of my options because I just did this previously. Lacida Bright, uh, just regular, not in bold or anything like that. The size is 150 point. Click on the page and you can put in the initials of your company. So I'm going to start with an H. Now let's move it into position there. I'm going to hold Alt and using my move tool, I'm going to drag straight across. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to grab my text tool again and change that to a C. And then I'm going to hold Alt again and select this and drag down another duplicate copy of that letter down the bottom. And I'm going to do the AND or ampersand symbol. All right. So that is pretty much my vintage logo finished. When you want to save this, you can either export it or save as, I'm easy. Um, so if you want to keep the layers, you'll save it as a PSD or Photoshop document file. Alternatively, you've got JPEG, which is a good option. Okay, that'll leave it as a high quality file with a pretty small file size. Um, you can save it as a PDF file if you're going to be printing it. Other options in the export file here is a PNG, which isn't a bad option either. Okay, so I might do a quick export as PNG. I'll just save it into an appropriate folder and I'll give it the name Deerhead and click Save. Okay, so that logo is all done and dusted. For future reference, I would probably save a second copy as a PSD file, so a Photoshop document file. That way, if you need to come back and edit it, you've got access to all these layers. All right, so that is all I'm going to show you in this video. That is how you create this cool looking Deerhead vintage logo in Photoshop.